Temperatures are rising around the world, and Singapore is no exception. On the 13th of May earlier this year, a temperature of 37.0 degrees Celsius was recorded in Ang Mo Kio, equaling the 40-year record for the highest daily maximum temperature in our country. But is that all there is to heat in Singapore? Hi everyone, I'm Avesta, and I'm an executive meteorologist at the Meteorological Service Singapore. On our previous episode of Let's Ask MSS, we've learned about the urban heat island effect and how it contributes to higher temperatures in urban environments. Continuing on the topic of heat, today we will be sharing about what is heat stress and how is it measured? When we are exposed to hot temperatures or extreme heat, we are at risk of heat stress. I'm here today at the National University of Singapore to speak to Associate Professor Jason Lee who will tell us more about heat stress. Hi, I'm Jason. I direct the Heat Resilience and Performance Centre at the Yong Ling School of Medicine here at the National University of Singapore. Hi Jason. So when we mention heat in Singapore, we also have to talk about the impact of humidity. How does that play a role in heat stress? That's right. First, it is important to understand what heat stress is. Heat stress can result from a combination of factors including environmental conditions, workloads and clothing. When heat stress becomes excessive, our body is not able to cool itself sufficiently, which can cause damage to our body. When we perspire during physical exertion, sweat evaporates from our skin to cool us down. However, in tropical Singapore, where it is humid, the high moisture content in the air slows down this evaporative cooling process, limiting the amount of heat that is removed from the body. Besides humidity, there are other environmental factors that would affect heat stress as well, right? Yes, the lack of wind and prolonged exposure to the sun increase heat stress as well. When combined with high humidity, this exacerbates the risk of heat-related conditions, from milder conditions such as heat rash and heat syncope, to more serious illnesses such as heat stroke, which in severe cases can be fatal. There are various methods to measure environmental heat stress. In Singapore, we use the wet bulb globe temperature, an internationally recognised indicator of heat stress on an individual to derive the levels of heat stress. The WBGT is a commonly used index and takes into consideration the combined effects of ambient air temperature, humidity, wind speed and solar radiation. I'm here at Bishan Stadium and this is one of our automated weather stations. To calculate WBGT, we use a weighted combination of temperatures from three thermometers. First, a dry bulb thermometer that measures the ambient air temperature of the surrounding area. The second thermometer measures the natural wet bulb temperature which represents the combined effects of humidity, wind, and solar radiation on temperature. The bulb of this thermometer is covered by a cotton wick soaked with water. Evaporation of water from the wet bulb cools the thermometer, in a similar way to how perspiration cools the body. More evaporation takes place in drier air, giving us a low wet bulb temperature, while less evaporation occurs when the air is already humid, giving us a higher wet bulb temperature. Last, this is the black globe thermometer. Encased in a black painted copper sphere, it measures the effect of direct solar radiation, the radiant heat of the surrounding area, and wind. MSS has a network of WBGT sensors island-wide to provide WBGT information, with more to be installed over time. This is part of a whole-of-government effort to tackle urban heat and the increasing temperatures that we are facing. Next, our senior meteorologist, Ms. Yap Kalin, will share with us more about the Heat Stress Advisory. In the Heat Stress Advisory, WBGT values have been categorised into three bands, indicating low, moderate and high risk levels of heat stress. As the value of WBGT increases, the risk of heat stress increases correspondingly. A WBGT value of 33 degrees Celsius or more indicates a high risk of heat-related illnesses when an individual engages in prolonged physical activities in the outdoors. Studies indicate that moderate and high heat stress risk levels tend to occur most frequently between 12 to 3 p.m. This advisory is a general guide to help the public make decisions relating to prolonged outdoor activities and minimizing heat-related injuries. Appropriate precautions need to be taken when the WBGT is high, such as moderating outdoor activities, drinking sufficient water, 
wearing lightweight and light coloured clothing, and self-monitoring for symptoms of heat-related illnesses. The Heat Stress Advisory is now available on the MyENB app and NSS website, updated at 15-minute intervals. We encourage you to check the Heat Stress Advisory when planning your prolonged outdoor activities and to take appropriate actions. This is part of the national effort to enhance preparedness to rising temperatures and to help the public make decisions to reduce the risk of heat injury. We hope that this video has been a useful introduction to the Heat Stress Advisory and to help you understand what is heat stress and how it's measured. For more information on WBGT or preventing heat stress, please download the MyNV app today. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you again soon on Let's Ask MSS.